Hi, welcome back to the breadboard. This is just a quick video to highlight a little issue that I came across when looking at adding things to this breadboard here. I wanted to just tap off this little supply that I have tucked on the back. I was working on a project. I needed 3.3 volts and I just tapped off of here. And I was having an awful lot of problems trying to get the basics to work. So obviously with troubleshooting, the first thing you do, check the power supply and it wasn't working very well. I'll show you in a minute what the actual test was that I did and I'll show you how it is or isn't working. And anyway, on investigation, I found that it was a bad connection. Now, I was using these jumpers like this. These are standard DuPont type style connectors. You see they just crimped onto some metal things and then shoved, shoved into a plastic sleeve. Now I was using the ones with the pins on like this right here. Okay, which is all well and good. You buy them, you know, all stacked together. You can get, I've got a great big pile of them here and I bet you these are all, right? I've got a whole ribbon cable full of them here and I wonder how good these are. Um, anyway, not all of these are created equal and I'll show you why. In fact, we'll have a look at one of these in a moment just to see if it's just the same. So I've got a macro picture set up right now. I'm just going to bring it into view so you can see what the issue is. I took the ends off of both a socket and a pin just so we can see. So let me just switch to that view right now. Okay, here we are. I've got a very close macro kind of shot going on here. I'm going to put a little bit of a light on, see if it can help. So this one here on this side is the socket, and the one on this side is the pin. You can see there, the back where the plastic from the wire comes in, that's all nicely crimped and everything else. Same as the um, socket on the left. But when you go down to where the pins, sorry, the wire gets crimped. If you look at that one on the right hand side, it's not crimping the wire. But you see that huge amount of gap in the wire there. It's just friction touching. Sorry. Yeah, just friction. The friction of it pushing against the side. There is no crimp whatsoever. This one on the left, it still looks a little dubious. I don't know if I can shed a bit more light to help that. Um, I'm already zoomed in quite a way. I don't know if I can get a bigger picture. But you can see there, the wires are not very well crimped. And what this highlights is often an issue that you can find by buying components or you know, leads and things like that from dubious sources. They kind of tried to skimp a little bit on the components. And in this case, the outer sleeve, the plastic, is nice and thick and looks like it's robust enough. But the inner sleeve, oh, sorry, the inner wire is way, way too thin and doesn't make proper contact. So it's just touching. It's not crimped really tight to get a very low resistance reading. And we'll see what the readings are in a minute. I'll get my multimeter out and show you. Anyway, I pulled up this great big pile of, pull up this great big pile of DuPont connectors. I'll just take a bit of them off. Let's just pick one of them at random. Maybe let's do this red one in the middle, All right? Sorry, I'm going to pick this red one in the middle. I'll pull the sleeve off of it, and we'll see how good the connection is on that. This wire feels a little thicker than what I was using on the other one. But let me just pull the um, tab off, and we'll see if we can get this under the magnifier. I'm just going to pull it out. So I've got it stripped out from the pack. I'm going to try and get it under this magnifier and have a look where these other two are. So let me just flip back to that view. You can see there, the crimp looks a little deeper. Okay, so here is the other wire got connected now. And as you can see, it looks like is just here, you can see that there's a lot more wires than what appear to be coming out here. And it seems to be crimped down a little bit more too. But we'll measure the um, resistance of the cable anyway and see what it's like. What I had to do with the project that I was working on was I actually went and threw, took all of the black covers off and actually soldered these in too. You shouldn't have to, but I did. If you had the right crimping tool it would be just to recrimp them tighter down, but it looks like they're just the wires are a bit too thin for normal use. 
Anyway, let me just clear this away a little bit and we'll um, get a meter on the bench and I'll show you what happens with the resistance of these. Okay, got my meter. Probes, let's just short them out. You see we get 0.1 ohms. Uh, I can probably null that out so we get 0 ohms. There we go. Now, if I grab this wire with the pins on it that looked dubious, I'm just going to hold one wire here and one on this end. You can see that's 1.92. I just straighten the wire a little bit. Look at that jumping everywhere. All right, three. You try to use that. I'm probably making it better, but I'm just giving it a little jiggle. I'm holding very tight onto the contacts so that it doesn't, it's not the meter that's breaking. And you can see that jumping everywhere. Right. I've had some of these that measured kilo ohms, not just um, something a lot less. I'm going to take one of the um, socket ones. I'm just going to put a pin slightly into it so that I can get a continuity on it. So these ones seem to be a little better. And if I put my meter there, you can see we get zero. I'm touching the other side and we get 20, 30, 5. I'll just, you can see it's jumping around everywhere. Right? That's no good at all. And what does that do if you try and use it in one of your circuits? Well, it's going to cause you, in my case, I had a 3.3 volt supply. Um, on the other end of the wire where I was going into the circuit, there's this one. See, that's reading 0.7 mega ohms, 800k for that wire. And that is definitely connected. All right, if I. There's my zero ohms. I got both sides. Let me just put my probe on the other side so you can see. All right, I'm. Um, Definitely connecting them up, and that's reading 300, 200, jump, well, it's jumping everywhere. As I showed you in the macro picture, the wires are just touching the side of the crimps. They're not being crimped actually in there, just the plastic is. So this would not work at all. It would give you so many issues when you're trying to test your circuit. So next time you're putting together a breadboard and your circuit doesn't appear to be doing what you think it should be doing, Check your jumper cables, especially if you've got ones that are crimped versus ones that are um, soldered. Here's a different kind, which uses round pins, and I think these ones are soldered in place. So let's just check the continuity of this one. All right here it is, and we're happily reading 0.2 ohms. So it's still a little bit high. It's probably a thin wire still. Um, and but if I start jiggling this wire see it's not varying at all I'm so surprised that's 0.2 ohms because if I short together the probes that's still zero so we got 200 milli ohms and it's now 0.1 probably a little bit of contact resistance but 0.2 is okay but 200k 50 even 50 100 ohms is way way too much if I grab this ribbon cable bunch. I'll just grab, try, test a few of them at random. Um, we'll take the black brown one off the beginning and go in there. Okay. That's good. That's reading zero. What about this red one in the middle that we were playing with? There we go. Is that going to read zero as well? Yep, that's reading zero. So as I said, it didn't look exceptionally good but it certainly did look like it was crimped much much further down so these ones look like they're probably a good batch of crimps those other ones i was using absolutely useless i'm either going to throw them out or I'll just flip the covers off and solder them all unless i can find a crimp connector that will work with them anyway i just wanted to make this video quick so i wanted to show you uh, a little picture of what goes on inside those connectors and show you how bad some of them can be. So even if you get a complete Arduino kit, um, I would still examine the 
DuPont connectors to make sure that they're crimped down properly. Um, also bear in mind that some of them may have very thin wires. So if you're doing anything that may draw, um, say, an amp, which you should normally be able to pull through a DuPont connector, um, it'll probably drop an awful lot of resistance as well. So you just need to be aware of that. And um, yeah, happy breadboarding now that you know one of the things that can bite you in the butt. See you in the next video. If you like this one, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, well then don't, and I will see you soon.